Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. We look at the pyramids of Egypt and the enormous stone blocks that make up the core masonry and even though there are some great explanations for how the pyramid was built such as the work of architect Jean-Pierre Houdin who has studied every detail of the Great Pyramid for the past 22 years many of us still can't fathom how such large blocks of stone were even moved. The great Greek historian Herodotus explained that the pyramids were built in steps, raising stones to their places by means of machines, machines that were formed of short planks of wood. One machine raised them from the ground to the top of the first step, and then another machine would take them from step one to step two and so on. This sounds like some kind of counterweight contraption. Of course Herodotus is not a contemporary source, he was writing more than 2000 years after the ancient Egyptian 4th dynasty, even though his writings were often well informed. This all means that when in Egypt, maybe he was educated in old kingdom building methods, or he could have been writing down his own educated guess. We just don't know who his sources were. Either way, Herodotus is a source, but he isn't a totally reliable source without anything to cross-reference his claims. Whether you believe the words of Herodotus, or the explanations by Jean-Pierre Houdin or something in between, ancient technology like counterweight mechanisms and pulleys were surely employed in large ancient Egyptian building projects. I think everyone can agree that some kind of technology was used, instead of the old-fashioned view of dozens of men pulling a stone behind them with good old-fashioned brute force. At Giza there wasn't just extravagant building projects, but also excessive digging. Archaeological evidence says the Osiris shaft, located just off the Caffrey Causeway, is at least 6th dynasty in origin. This shaft is 114 feet in depth. Campbell's tomb which is located behind the Sphinx is 72 feet in depth. Therefore, the ancient Egyptians had to lift out huge amounts of excavated limestone from depth, and so, some kind of technology was surely needed to achieve this. Well, I may not have all of the answers. The setups and systems employed by the ancient Egyptian construction sites are still clear as mud. But just less than 90 years ago, a piece of the puzzle was discovered, and it often goes unmentioned. Not many people know about a discovery by the brilliant and progressive Egyptologist Selim Hassan in the 1930s, and well documented in his 1960 publication, The Great Pyramid of Khufu and its Mortuary Chapel. From 1932 to 1933, Hassan was clearing the pyramid city of Queen Kenkawas, the ruined structures to the east of the badly eroded pyramid light structure. In one brick house, he found an artefact that was made of basalt rock. It had a very distinct shape, with a hole running through it in three grooves on one edge. Two years later, in 1935, and whilst cleaning an area to the east of the Pyramid of Khafre, he discovered a second object, absolutely identical to the one already discovered. Apparently, even more have been found since. Due to the rock's clearly functional use, Hassan consulted a number of architects, and with some discussion and modelling, it was their belief that the objects were in fact pulleys, or more accurately, proto-pulleys, that were used by the ancient Egyptians as part of an ancient machine, likely wooden to raise huge weights. I know the word machine in the modern era has a different meaning to how Herodotus used it, and no, it's not as exciting as the amazing Greek Antikythera mechanism, but this find was very significant. Because the first basalt object was found in a 4th dynasty context, and because the second one was pretty much identical, it was a fair assumption that the pyramid builders did have technical instruments and contraptions to assist in the movement and lifting of large weights, aka large blocks of limestone and granite. Before the discovery, it was a long-held belief that wooden rollers, ropes, ramps and brute force was how the blocks were moved from the quarries, across the Giza Plateau and towards each respective building site. 
And this could still be true in part, but the discovery by Selim Hassan shows the 4th Dynasty Egyptians had invented a type of proto-pulley, which would make the job of moving and lifting stone far easier. Before the 1930s, most Egyptologists believed the Egyptians were too primitive to have invented it. The idea was not considered credible, but Hassan had found clear evidence that this was not the case. As stated, he believed they were part of some larger contraption, maybe the machines described by Herodotus, to move the limestone blocks into position. As stated, these pulleys, if that is what they are, were made of basalt. They were, as described in Hassan's book, made from a very solid stone, and therefore these pulleys could withstand major stresses and strains. Hassan states the definition of pulley in the Oxford English Dictionary, which is, The pulley is one of the simple mechanical powers consisting of a grooved wheel mounted in a block, so that a cord or the like may pass over it used for changing the direction of power, especially for the raising of weights by pulling downwards. The artefacts found by Hassan measured 24 centimeters by 18, which is around 9.5 inches by 7. These were clearly not small objects, and due to their form, they clearly had a function in the Old Kingdom. From the front, it looks like a spindle, with a hole in its lower part to keep it stable. From the side we can see three grooves, made for three ropes, which could be pulled smoothly by the workers. After consulting architects, Hassan said it is not impossible in the case of raising a stone of enormous weight that many of these pulleys were fixed near each other and then used at the same time. Hassan says that one of the ancient pulleys was tested, and in his own words, it performed a function in an admirable and excellent manner. He says that the ancient pulley served a purpose as perfectly as a modern pulley can do nowadays. Since the 1960 publication by Selim Hassan, Egyptologists have still argued over what the object actually is, and whilst there is a strong case for it being some kind of proto-pulley, others point out that it doesn't have a rimmed wheel like a true pulley, and dot for the idea it is some kind of bearing stone. I think the mushroom top of the object was surely to run three ropes over it, and the strength of the material used, the hard basalt rock, and the clear change in direction of pull that the object would provide certainly seems to imply that it was used in pulling heavy loads. I imagine that this end would have slotted into bedrock, a stone, a wooden post, or contraption of some kind, and a stone or wooden pin would have passed through the hole to keep it in place in the same way that Old Kingdom sarcophagi were pinned shut. Because of this artefact, when pulling a block of stone, some people could pull from the front but also from behind. This would move it forward much faster. You could have had a number of the objects set up along a ramp. These proto-pulleys could have also been used on the wooden contraptions that Jean-Pierre Houdin believes were set up in and around the Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid, which was a large counterweight system to hoist up the large granite beams. It's also possible they would have been in place at the edges of the deep geyser shafts as they were dug. Some container could have been attached to ropes, and then it was lowered down using proto-pulleys. This container would then be filled with debris and pulled up, with teams of workers pulling laterally, using the pulley to guide the ropes. It's also possible they were used to lower the stone coffers into the Osiris shaft, Campbell's tomb and others at Giza, with ropes running over them and workers gently lowering the coffers into position. Whatever it was used for, it is a piece of ancient Egyptian 4th dynasty technology. It was made from hard stone for a reason, it has three grooves and a hole for a reason, and so it is clearly a functional tool carefully crafted with a specific purpose. Interestingly, three years ago a new story broke which I covered on the Ancient Architects channel about a 4,500 year old ramp contraption that was discovered. At the ancient quarry site known as Hatnub, a steep ramp was uncovered flanked by two staircases with numerous post holes. 
the archaeologists hypothesized that the posts in each post hole was some kind of ancient pulley system. A stone would be on a sledge positioned in the center of the ramp, and workers would be on the staircases. Ropes would be attached to the sledge, and some people would be stood on the stairs higher up to simply pull the stone. But some ropes would have gone around the posts, each possibly having a proto-pulley stone affixed. And so, other workers could be lower down on the staircase and pulling downwards. The ramp at the quarry does date to the 4th dynasty, and if this method was used at a quarry in the Old Kingdom, it could well have been employed at a major building site like Giza. Maybe you agree with the idea and maybe you don't, but what I'm showing in this video is that this is a very specific tool that was found within a 4th dynasty context at Giza. It is a piece of Old Kingdom technology that had a very specific function, and I'd love to know your thoughts on what you think that function was. So please do leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.